Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. There are some reserved IP addresses that we cannot use. The first one is 127.0.0.1. This is actually a really important IP address to memorize because we use it a lot in the real world. This is called a loopback address. And it's actually used for testing the IP stack on a host. So if I'm on a Windows 7 machine, let's go over to a Windows 7 machine right now. And I open up a command prompt. If I ping 127.0.0.1 and hit enter, I'm actually pinging myself right now. And this confirms that the IP stack on this particular computer is working. And it's actually one of the first tests we'll do if we suspect this particular computer has a networking problem. We'll make sure we can at least ping ourselves. If we can't ping ourselves, then we could have a problem with a network card or something like that. Or it could be even a higher level problem, like a problem with the OS. The next IP address is 255.255.255.255. This is actually a broadcast to all nodes on technically all networks, but realistically a broadcast is only going to hit your current network because we talked about broadcast domains already. And we also saw this when we talked about DHCP. Now there is a broadcast IP address that we'll see when we get into subnetting for each network, but if we don't know that network, so we can't figure out the broadcast IP address for that specific network, we can use 255.255.255.255 and that will still broadcast it out. The next IP address is 0.0.0.0 and this is actually used by Cisco routers to designate the default route and we'll see this a little bit later on but it also means any network. Now let's talk about private IP addresses. These are very very important and this is actually what saved IP version 4 addresses from running out. Because when they came up with IP version 4, they thought, ah, you know, no way we'll need as many addresses as IP version 4 has. But it turns out we did. As the internet grew, we used really used up a lot of addresses. But these private IP addresses, along with network address translation, really saved a ton of IP addresses. We would have ran out a long time ago if we didn't have these private IP addresses. And what private IP addresses are is they're IP addresses that are not publicly routable. So these IP addresses are not routable on the internet. We can configure our computers within our network to use these IP addresses, but when the computer needs to talk to the a computer on the internet, then one of these private IP addresses actually needs to be translated into a publicly addressable IP address. And the publicly addressable IP addresses are going to be our class A, B, and C addresses that are not in these ranges. So if they're not in these ranges, they're publicly routable. If they are in these ranges, then they're private IP addresses. So the class A private IP address range is 10.0.0.0 through 10.255.255.255. So basically, if it starts with a 10, it's a private IP address. The class B private IP address range is 172.16.0.0 through 172.31.255.255. So if it starts with a 172.16 all the way up to 172.31, then it's a class B private IP address, and it's not publicly routable on the Internet. Class C private address range is 192.168.0.0 through 192.168.255.255. So, pretty easy to remember if it starts with a 192.168, then it's a private IP address. And we have to memorize these ranges, both in the real world and for the test.